Okay, hey, it's uh, me again. For this last and uh, third video uh, about the week five slideshow, I'm going to be much briefer. Okay, so let's go back to where we, we finished up uh, last time with this <clears throat> slide of uh, Odysseus and Princess Nausicaa. You'll be reading that for, for this week. But moving forward, once he, uh, once he arrives in the palace of Sharia and meets Nausicaa's parents, uh, he tells them his story. You know, they feed him, they entertain him, they play games, they play songs, and finally it comes, you know, he hasn't identified himself yet, they don't know who he is, but he identifies himself through his story, and then his story takes up uh, books 9 through 12. So in books 7 and 8, you know, he, uh, he uh, is with the, the king and the queen of Sharia, Princess Nausicaa's parents, and uh, there's a lot about bards in, 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 that, in those books, about the song, about, about stories, about singing, about, about uh, court life, you know, the, 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 the life inside the, the castle, right? The, the life of, of nobility. But also you learn about this place, Sharia, the, the people, how they live, who they are, um, what their customs are. But then Odysseus tells his story from books 9 through 12, beginning famously with the story of uh, the blinding of Polythemus, one of the Cyclops. And the son of Poseidon, and this is the origin of Odysseus's curse, or at least that's the story that Homer is telling us. That Odysseus's struggles to return home began here. Um, although I think when you get to the end of the poem, you know, or when you get to the end of Odysseus's story in Book Twelve, you know, there's a real question there: where does the where does the struggle begin? I mean, notice right off the bat, the men after they defeat the Trojans, they go to another town. They, uh, they pillage the town, they, they plunder the town, uh, and they get in a fight with the people in that town. But so, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a question right off the bat about, you know, war and the, the victors of war and, and whether they deserve what's coming to them. But uh, Odysseus, and Odysseus was fighting in this war. He was, he was the hero of the Trojan War in the sense he, he came up with the idea of the horse. Uh, now he's returning home and we were witnessing his struggles. Um, anyway, here is the telling of the tale of his blinding of Polyphemus, the Cyclops, and how he escaped from that island. Um, here is an image of Poseidon, the god of the sea, the earth shaker, riding on Hippocampus. This is half horse, half serpent, is how he's represented. Um, interesting image of the god of the sea, Poseidon, with his trident, with that three pronged uh, spear in his hand. And the dolphins following him. Uh, here's Athena. Okay, she is born from the head of Zeus. Uh, how does this happen? Well, there's the prophecy that Zeus will be overtaken by the son of Metis, his wife uh, or his his, his lover. Um, and so, uh, instead of allowing Metis to give birth to their son, he swallows her. Right? Metis is the goddess of wisdom and cunning because um, she's a goddess. <clears throat> But uh, Zeus swallows Metis, right? She's a lesser or minor goddess um, uh, to try to prevent the prophecy from coming true. But also out of his head comes Athena. So Athena is born out of the head of Zeus, right? After he swallows Metis, um, the goddess of wisdom. So she gets her wisdom from her mother Metis, who's inside of <laughs> Zeus. She gets something from her father as well, um, his stubbornness. <clears throat> Okay, but the cunning and the wisdom comes from Metis, uh, interestingly. Uh, Athena, the goddess of wisdom, crafts, right? She is the goddess. So the loom, right? When Penelope is weaving the loom, right? Athena is the kind of the, the model weaver, um, but also battle warfare. Here she is with Poseidon, okay, negotiating something. The gods are always negotiating. Here's Odysseus in book 10. This is another part of the story. He will end up, after he leaves this island of the Cyclops, he ends up uh, on the island of Circe, and that is the focus of Miller's novel. Uh, not the encounter with Odysseus, but the life of Circe. Is, is, that's Miller's novel is kind of telling us the life of Circe. But here we have Odysseus, um, and he is the one who is able to, um, uh, you know, resist her, her, her charms, literally. But with the help of Hermes. Hermes gives him a potion that he takes before he encounters Circe, and so her, uh, her the, 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 what she uses to turn men into pigs doesn't work on him because Hermes has helped Odysseus. And so this is the moment where he reveals himself as like someone who's not going to be uh, pushed around by her, right? He pulls his dagger 
uh, but he doesn't kill her, right? They reach a negotiation, right? So we see on the left side an image of the pig, one of Odysseus's men that has been turned into a pig, and she is, a, you know, again, about to turn him into a pig, but Hermes has helped him by giving him a potion. Um, so they negotiate. This is the beginning of a negotiation, right? It begins with a sword, but it ends with words, and, well, you can, you'll find out. <clears throat> but that's the, the, the painting of the, of the witch, Circe, okay, who is the hero of Miller's novel. Um, here's Odysseus when he arrives home after he leaves the island of Circe. He, so after he finishes telling his story. So, he, you know, the, the story of the Cyclops, Polyphemus, and the blinding of Polyphemus, and the story of escaping from the island of Circe, that's all part of the story that Odysseus tells in books 9 through 12. And then he comes home in book 13. We'll, we'll talk about that. But here is the scene where he, 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 the first person he visits is his loyal swineherd, right? Uh, Ithaca is a land of goats and swine, pigs and goats and so Eumaeus is a, a swineherd. Uh, Odysseus, uh, he is known for his goats, among other things. But he goes to his loyal swineherd uh, because he trusts him. So here he is with the just an ordinary man, right? Odysseus, with his trusted friend, Eumaeus. Um, here he is with his trusted nurse in book 19. This is a famous scene where she is washing his foot and she recognizes the scar on his leg, on his, on his, on his calf, and she knows it's Odysseus, right? So he's disguising himself throughout his homecoming. After he arrives home in, in book 13, he disguises himself. He even keeps his identity from Eumaeus, even though he trusts him. And here he's trying to keep his identity, and Eurycleia recognizes him. Uh, and so he, he gets her to not reveal who he is to others. But that's a famous scene in the story. Anyway, here's an image of Athena with Heracles, or Hercules as he's known in Roman mythology. Uh, you might know the story of Hercules. Athena, you know, son of Zeus, right? He sort of does the 12 labors for us, right? He, he, um, you know, he's kind of a hero of mankind, but he's, Athena is kind of a friend of Heracles, right? He, he, he shares, um, you know, she, she, she has a fondness for Heracles in the way that she has a fondness for Odysseus. So here she is uh, pouring something for Heracles. Um, and he is represented here with the lion skin, much like Gilgamesh, right? He's, Heracles is a kind of Gilgamesh figure, a Greek Gilgamesh, and you know, it's an older story, right? The story of Heracles is much older than the story of Odysseus and the Trojan War, right? In the, in the, in the before times, in the, in the origins, that kind of go all the way back to the origins, right? Uh, like Gilgamesh is kind of the, the earliest king that we have a story about in Mesopotamian culture. Heracles was not a king, but he's kind of this hero who is made into a god for the labors that he does for mankind. Um, and here is Athena and, Athena and Odysseus. Like she, is, she is his protector. She is his patron, much like Shamash is the protector of Gilgamesh. But you, you've witnessed how she intervenes. She gets involved. But here she is at the end of the story when Odysseus is stringing his bow about to destroy the suitors. But there is Athena, the warrior. She's you know, there standing with him. Um, so notice, you know, she's there with Heracles, the hero. Here she is with Odysseus. Athena always follows the hero, right? Um, she's always there with the hero. Uh, Odysseus strings the bow. Here he is killing the suitors in the hall in book 22. So you'll have that to look forward to, the slaughter. Uh, and the last, the last slide here, and then I'll be done, is um, an image of Athena, a Roman sculpture. Okay, the Romans uh, uh, absorb the Greek religion and the Greek mythology and the Greek stories and the Greek literature, right? And they, they gave their own names to the Greek gods, but uh, the stories are the same. They're just with, with, with Roman names uh, and sort of told in a Roman context, right? They, the Romans um, are, are the next great empire after the Greeks. So the Greek empire uh, culminates with uh, Alexander the Great and his, his army kind of moving uh, east into India and, you know, he, he goes very far conquering many nations, right? He's a kind of Gilgamesh for the Greeks, right? Uh, a warrior. Um, and the, the, the Alexander's army kind of creates this vast empire for the Greeks. It extends very far east. And that's, um, that's the height of the, of the Greek empire, okay? Um, after that, we have the rise of, of, of the Roman Empire later. Um, but anyway, here is a statue of Athena, a Roman statue of Athena. Um, and she is represented with her guardian serpent, right, at the center of the Acropolis um, in, in, uh, in, in, in Rome. And, 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 and uh, 
certainly at the center of the of, of Athens was a statue of Athena, okay, with her serpent, right? And the, the Romans reproduced this in, in, in ancient Rome. Uh, it's interesting, right? The serpent is a symbol of wisdom, of cunning, of, of, of power uh, here in both Greek and Roman culture. Um, um, but, she, but the serpent is the guardian, right? The, just as Athena is guarding the, the city, so the serpent is the guardian of the city. Um, okay, so interesting, given the connotation of the serpent later in Genesis and, and later Christianity, right? The serpent is, is a complicated symbol in the ancient world. Okay, so that's where I want to end up. And um, we'll talk more next week about Homer's Odyssey, and we'll begin thinking about uh, Madeline Miller's novel, Circe. Okay, that's all. Thanks.